Hi, the topic of today's video is brain inflammation. Or, better said, we're talking about brain fog. That's probably more recognizable for you. Hi, my name is Arjan Kuipers and in today's video I'm going to show you what brain inflammation is, what factors play an important role in keeping brain inflammation going on and what you can do to dampen brain inflammation and the results of the brain inflammation because they are big. This is perhaps the most overlooked problem after a stroke or a brain injury, especially when you have had a concussion and there's ongoing problems for months and years. So you have to reckon with we are dealing with brain inflammation. From a personal standpoint, I wish I had this information when I was dealing with the results of multiple accidents with my mother. I wish I had the information I'm going to share with you. So this is very personal for me. This is the Brain Rehab Channel, where we show stroke survivors and those with a brain injury how to continue to improve. We are out of the box thinkers and bending the rules of rehab. Linda, stroke survivor, biohacker, and best selling author of Stroke Rebel. Arjun, functional neurologist and expert brain trainer. We are brain.rehab. Okay, let us start. And it will pay off to stick to the end. You will get a PDF with recommendations of what you can do so you can read it again You can read the whole text of what I'm saying today and you get a sheet with recommendations of what you can do with the brain inflammation What is brain inflammation? Brain inflammation in itself is not a bad thing When you've had a brain injury or a stroke you have to clear out injured cells damaged cells or dead cells even that is what brain inflammation is. You get an inflammatory response, which is very natural. There's a little problem in the brain. We have specialized cells called microglial cells that regulate the immune response in your brain. The immune response in your brain is different than the immune response you have in the rest of your body. That is more refined. The immune response in the rest of your body is you get an inflammation, you get a reaction or an allergic reaction and things settle down again. Not so in the brain. Often, most cases, when you're dealing with stroke and ongoing problems after a traumatic brain injury, the immune response is not settling down. The microglial cells, which are supportive cells to the nerve cells, they trigger an immune response, they forget about what their normal task is, which is supporting the nerve cells function, speeding up nerve conductivity, and they go into a more depressed mode where they send off chemicals, the so-called cytokines, to trigger immune reactions. Later I will tell you that there is a lot of factors that make that the neuroinflammation, the brain inflammation, just continues to go on. There's a lot of factors that happen also after a stroke or a brain injury that keep the neuroinflammation going on for months and years. It doesn't settle down by itself. And that's why the topic of today is so hugely important, because you have to learn how to deal with it, how to recognize it, and how to dampen this reaction. So now you learned that it is very likely that you're dealing with neuroinflammation that is ongoing. How do you recognize it? What is the hallmark sign of brain inflammation? Well, basically it is brain fog. To be fogged up in your brain, not being able to clearly think. It is varying mental speeds. If you're dealing with varying mental speech throughout the day, you know you're dealing with brain inflammation, especially after stroke or brain injury. Also, when you're reacting, you eat something that you do not completely tolerate, or there's like a food intolerance to milk or to gluten, or you are sensitive to fungi, to dust, and this triggers mental fatigue or varying mental speeds or brain fog, you know you're dealing with brain inflammation. 
And even if you're not aware of it, after a stroke, you know you're dealing with brain inflammation. When you're dealing with ongoing problems after a concussion, you know you're dealing with brain inflammation. So this is how you recognize it. What factors play a role in this? Well, uh, we already mentioned quite a few in the previous masterclass, reducing fatigue or tiredness after a stroke or brain injury. Sleep, hugely important. We're going to talk in the next masterclass in length about sleep, what you can do to improve your sleep, because it is so important to dampen neuroinflammation, to be less tired, to make the energy factories work better, and a lot more. But that's for the next masterclass. When you're dealing with decreased oxygen in the system, because you're a smoker, you have lung problems, you have heart problems, if you have autoimmune condition, if you have a lot of toxins in your environment, if you are stressed, if there's a lot of stress, and we all know there is a stress situation after stroke or traumatic brain injury, then you're more prone to continue the neuroinflammation. Take away these factors and it is less likely that the neuroinflammation, the brain inflammation keeps flaring up. So pay attention to all of these factors and optimize them. If you exercise too little or don't exercise at all, there's more chance that the brain inflammation will flare up when you have low grade of uh, inflammation because you exercise a little bit or to what you're capable of less likely that the brain inflammation flares up. Medication, alcohol, smoking, bad gut health, permeable gut, that's for another masterclass how to improve gut function, then it's more likely that the brain inflammation flares up. So, very important, be aware, if you have brain inflammation and you have the signs thereof, what factors play a role? We already mentioned them in the Getting More Energy Masterclass, the previous ma mini masterclass, I mention this again. Sleep, we're going to focus on in the next mini masterclass. So what can you do right now, other than to improve your lifestyle, improve your sleep, improve your eating habits, exercise a little bit more to what you're capable of, of course, reducing alcohol, reducing smoking, reducing uh, the medication you're taking in, uh, please talk to your GP, your specialist about this, or your pharmacist. Medication has a huge effect also on the neuroinflammation. At present, and this is interesting, there are no pharmaceuticals or real clear tests to prove brain inflammation because the brain is in a contained space. It's not easy to access. There's no pharmaceuticals, no medication to dampen brain inflammation. However, there are natural occurring products that can greatly help dampening the neuroinflammation. So besides changing your lifestyle habits, you can take some natural products that will greatly benefit in dampening the brain inflammation. What are they? Well, there's a group of chemicals in nature called so-called Flavonoids, they are in, often in plant-based products, which can greatly help. We know that green tea is very beneficial. In green tea we have so-called flavonoids, that's called catechines. They are bicalin, luteolin, um, we have uh, resveratrol, we have curcumin. Curcumin is the big one that we probably have heard about curcumin and its beneficial effect on dampening inflammation. Side note, curcumin has an effect on other medications that you take, so also that you have to discuss with your doctor or your pharmacist to see if you can take those products. I have noted them down in the download sheet that's below the video, so you can download it after the video is finished. There's another group of products that you can also use that have shown to be of benefit in dampening neuroinflammation or the brain inflammation. You can use both terms. And those are the products that they are antioxidants. The most powerful antioxidant that you have in your body yourself is called glutathione. Glutathione levels decrease when you get older, 
when you are diseased, when you are stressed. But there are natural products that you can take to promote glutathione production. If you take glutathione as a product, it will not help so much because it's broken down in your digestive tracts, but you can take precursors, substances that will help to build glutathione levels. What are those substances? Uh, and acetyl cysteine, again, don't have to remember this, they are in the sheet down below the video. Alpha lipoic acid, and those two, NAC and acetyl cysteine and alpha lip lipoic acid, they have scientifically been shown to really help reduce fatigue as well, together with krill oil and uh, the substances that are. So that's, that's a very interesting concept. Uh, milk, thistle, go to cola, all of those substances together with L-glutamine. Uh, I mentioned that in the previous video, L-glutamine is also for the repair of your gut, optimizing gut health. Those substances help to promote glutathione production, dampening the brain inflammation in your body. And next to that you can take your omega-3s, krill oils and magnesium to do the same. I hope after this video that you have learned what brain inflammation is, that it is very likely that you are dealing with it. It's often overlooked. If not addressed, it will greatly have an effect on how you feel and how well you can recover. So it's very important to address brain inflammation. You have learned what to do now in this video. In the upcoming video, we're going to talk about one of the biggest factors that can help reduce brain inflammation and that is sleeping better. Please give your comments below, download the worksheets below, download the recommendations. I will see you in the next mini masterclass. Our Brain.Rehab portal is a continuous improvement training platform for the home situation. It contains the best training, masterclasses, latest news and interviews on topics that will keep you improving in the years to come. Check out what it can do for you and become a member of the Brain.Rehab Tribe, www.brain.rehab.